Hey YouTube, Ben from the future here and just wanted to make a quick little announcement and apology. So first with the apologies, I'm going to say sorry f in advance for the glare. I got to the site a little bit late and I was uh, rushed for time in terms of setup. So little apologies there, hopefully everything turns out okay in ter um, after post. Secondly, the announcements. If you haven't checked out the Happy New Year announcement video for 2024, I highly suggest that you check it out. Uh, it just has a little bit of a plan for January and early February, and it has two sub goals. So once we get to 600 subs and then 1,000 subs, there's going to be two separate giveaways. So if you want to know what we're giving away, check out the video there. Hope you enjoy the coverage. I'm definitely a little bit out of practice, so... Hope you guys enjoy nonetheless. Okie dokie, we are here in round two for the side event at the Face to Face Tour Toronto uh, that happened this past weekend, the second weekend of January. So just a couple notes, we have updated or rearranged the feature match area, so there should be way less glare than uh, round one, so hopefully everything's much better this time around. Secondly, I do apologize to all of the players. Um, I was just working with what I had and the table was a little bit small. So hopefully next time I can get there a little bit earlier and ensure that we have like a proper size table because um, these guys mats, their beautiful mats should not be hanging off the edge if they want to overlap the two player mat. All right, so with all that preamble out of the way, here we are with the player introductions. Uh, we have on player one side, Justin, on four color beans. Um, I think it's all the colors excluding red. We have the same Chris from round one on Doomsday again. So we're just waiting for the judge to clarify if we can if the round timer has started yet. Looks like Chris is going for a mulligan. Nope, he's keeping a seven. All right, so Justin is going to take a mulligan to six. Okie dokie. So it looks like Justin is keeping his six, going to bottom the card, and Chris going to start us off once again, cycling a street wraith. Plays an underground C into Thoughtseize. So definitely not playing Turbo Doomsday. Um, obviously opting to go the slower route just to ensure that Thoughtseize can resolve. So Justin is going to be revealing Swords to Plowshare, Up the Beanstalk, Triumph of St. Catherine, a second Swords to Plowshare, Tundra, and Misty Rainforest. So Up the Beanstalk is going to get taken. Kind of, a, I think the swords are mostly irrelevant in this matchup. Whether or not Justin will get to the point of resolving the Triumph of St. Catherine and kind of ending the game that way is up in the air as Chris is the slower version of Doomsday, but it still should be faster than the Triumph of St. Catherine win. Although, if Justin can put a stranglehold on the on the match and control Doomsday, he can, mo he can probably get to that point. So here comes a perfect brainstorm into Ponder, meaning he got to brainstorm, put away his two worst cards, and then fe uh, fetch them and shuffle them away. And then he gets to see even more cards with this ponder. Looks like he's going to keep the ponder. Keep it on top and then draw. Alright, passing the turn back to Justin. Justin going to draw for his turn. Down comes a Tundra. So no Brainstorm. Going to crack the Misty Rainforest. I wonder if this is going to just be in another up the Beanstalk. I think it must be. There's like... I'm not sure ex Justin's exact list, but I don't think there's any black spell he would be valuing over a Brainstorm or a Ponder. So it has to be another Beanstalk. There it is. Okay. There's a daze from Chris stopping, stopping the Beans from trying to do its thing. Down comes a second Thoughtseize from Chris. There's a lot of permanent removal. 
So Chris going to double check to see if taking the Triumph of St. Catherine is worth it. Um, so now Justin just left with Leyline Binding Double Swords to Plowshare. So if Chris can get off a of Doomsday here, the coast is clear. There it is. Big game winning spells. This is even a tough position for Justin because he doesn't even have a second blue spell to pitch if he top decks like a force for protection. Or sorry, a force to interrupt that Thassa's Oracle. But Chris does have two cards in hand still. So we're going to see if he has disruption for any sort of disruption. But I think like the biggest biggest hurdle is Chris needs to build a pile that has that leaves zero cards in his deck which is usually the outcome that the Doomsday player wants just in case but he for sure needs to have zero cards in his in his library when that Thassa's Oracle comes down because in response to the Thassa's Oracle trigger um Justin can remove it and then the devotion of blue will have to be will be zero so Chris finishing up his pile again pretty quick Justin going to check to see what was taken out so we see one force of will. I think there was two more force of wills. It's kind of hard to see from this this perspective. I think all four force of wills are in Chris's deck. So not sure what the the two cards in his hand could possibly be. Not sure if Chris is even worried about having to need a force of will. Justin's gonna fire off a ponder immediately. I want to see if there's any answers that he can find. Does not find a single thing that he wants and will immediately shuffle the, from the ponder. So let's see. Can Justin blind draw a way to prevent Doomsday from winning? Well, there's a land, so... Chris is all good to win, I'm pretty sure. There's a Lotus Petal. Oh, just passing the turn. Was there no way? I guess his life total is so low that he can't just constantly cycle street rates. There's another ponder off the top from Justin. And another immediate shuffle. Not sure exactly what he's looking for. I'm not even sure if there's a way for four color beans to stop this. Like their main the main game plan should have been to stop the doomsday no matter what i think once the doomsday has resolved it's very hard for this deck to 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 kind of come back so there's one black mana I'm gonna cycle off a edge of autumn generate a second oh the, these could they're probably blue mana now that i mention now that i think about it there's a cavern of souls fetches for the last card in the deck Perfect. That's a that's a clever way. Ah, okay, so that's that's the way Chris wanted to resolve this, is to ensure that he has zero cards in his in his library. And Chris playing to his outs still has that one mana for the days just in case, and then has extra mana from the Lotus Petal, for some random odd reason. If Justin ever has double days. But yeah, that will be game one to Chris. Alrighty, here we are with game number two between Justin and Chris. Justin on Four Color Beans and Chris on his Doomsday list. So Justin should be on the play. I don't think there's any reason he would want to go second. Just getting, Justin going to just double check his sideboard really quickly. Chris going to mull over this this opening hand. Justin going to go down to six. Chris going to keep his seven. Not good coming from the Doomsday player. Oh no, Justin going down to five. This is not looking great. Justin being a control deck going down to five. Most likely he's digging for... Just backup answers to make sure that Doomsday doesn't resolve. However, going down to 5 in the face of a Doomsday player who's just kept 7 cards is not exactly where you want to be as the control player. But he has to do all that he can to make sure that that Doomsday doesn't go off. Um, I think Chris is heavily advantaged here because he is playing the slower version of Doomsday. Like He's not trying to turbo it out as soon as possible. He is playing 
uh, hand disruptions to make sure that the coast is clear. So that's one huge advantage that Chris is willing to sacrifice is that he can keep a hand that doesn't have like a doomsday setup in it and he can just rely on kind of setting up his thought seizes at the right time to make sure that the coast is clear. So Justin looked like he's settling on his five. I like I don't think there's any realistic scenario where you keep where you go down to four unless you have like no lands. But you should have at least some sources of lands, especially between like being a control deck and having Lorien revealed. So Justin's gonna start off with an underground C. Chris gonna draw for his turn. And we'll see what he starts off with. There's an Underground Sea and probably a Thought Seas. One of the greatest cards ever printed. So in the face of this Thought Seas, Justin's just going to ensure that he has future land drops. Going to cycle the Lorien Revealed away. Probably going to find like a Tundra, either Tundra or a Tropical. If he finds a Tropical, then he can play Beans if it, if it ever comes off the top. There's a Flusterstorm, Ponder, up the Beanstalk, and the Tropical Island that Justin just searched for. So I think if you're Chris, you most likely take the Flusterstorm or the Ponder. Like, I don't think up the Beanstalk is that much of a threat. Like, there could be something that I'm, like, overlooking, but... Yeah... So he does take the, the up the Beanstalk, interesting. If Justin plays up the Beanstalk on turn 2, then he can't ponder into a Force of Will. So I'm curious... This leads me to believe... Like, taking up the Beanstalk over a Ponder or a Flusterstorm leads me to believe that Chris doesn't have a Doomsday in his hand, and he isn't setting up for it for turn 2. Alright, so Justin will keep the cards off the Ponder and then draw off of it. Pass the turn back to Chris. Chris is just going to play a Polluted Delta and pass the turn. Chris is going to draw for his turn. So now Chris is giving Justin plenty of time to just draw draw to his outs. Down comes a brainstorm from Chris. And there's an Orcish Bowmaster from Justin. So this is the interaction that a lot of people were afraid of when Orcish Bowmaster was printed. And I think this is the advantage that Four Color Beans has over like a heavy white splash is the bowmasters all right so chris is going to resolve the brainstorm and that will trigger the orcish bowmaster to amass three more making his orc army token a 4-4 and pinging chris down to 14. chris then going to shuffle away what he brainstormed so this is all at the end of justin's turn chris going to find a tropical island this is most likely going, like, he knows that Justin is on the black version of Four Color Beans, so he's probably already realized that the, the Orcish Bowmasters is going to be a big problem, so he's most likely setting up for a Veil of Summer. Down comes a Misty Rainforest from Chris, and just going to pass the turn. Justin going to untap and draw, going straight into combat. Swinging in for 5. Drops Chris down to 8. I think there's a, a Beans coming. 2 mana for up the Beanstalk. Now Justin's Force of Wills are pretty good here. I don't know if they're... I, I'm unfamiliar what other 5 mana spells other than Lorien Reveal there is. I guess I, uh, the Triumph of St. Catherine is, is a 5 mana creature so down comes a flooded strand from justin gonna pass to chris chris gonna draw for the turn there's an underground sea there's a ponder so i think chris gonna try to try to find a doomsday and just try to win here it's he's under like an immense pressure from from the Orcish Bowmaster. Like, this army is going to be a 5-5 at the end of this ponder. 
And if Chris tries to dig even further to try to end the game, um, the orc army might end up just one shotting him. So yeah, Chris not finding what he's looking for most likely n didn't find a reliable source of either black mana or the doomsday itself. Okay, Chris going to draw off the ponder. This is going to resolve the orc army. Chris takes one damage going down to seven and he will pass the turn. I'm curious, what happens if someone's at one life and they doomsday? Because it's supposed to be half the right, the life rounded, rounded up. Like that's how much they would lose. So they would lose one point of life. I'm curious. I wonder if that's, if anyone's ever tried that. Justin going to set up a, a perfect brainstorm of his own. So using the tropical island to brainstorm puts two cards back and now he's going to shuffle shuffle the cards away with the flooded strand looks to find his fourth duel so he has tundra underground sea tropical island savannah looks like he has i think three cards in hand okay what is he going to do there's a ponder and there's an immediate shuffle I'm going to draw off the ponder I think we just go straight to attacks now, right? Bring Chris down to one. All right, Justin passing the turn. Chris going to untap. No, oh, still doing stuff at the end of Justin's turn. So cycled Lorian revealed. Are we finding a black source? Yeah, so I think this is the, the best way because you can't activate the Misty Rainforest because he's at one life. So he needs to find the black source some other way and Hitting a Lotus Petal if you don't have it is not reliable. Yeah, Chris just going to scoop it up. All right, so that makes it one to one. And most likely Chris being on the play in game three. Okie dokie, here we are for game three. Justin on four color beans and Chris on Doomsday. It is one to one. Chris taking the, the first game with a dominant two Thoughtsies into Doomsday. And then Justin overtaking game two with a well-timed Orcish Bowmasters in response to a Brainstorm. So now I assume Chris is going to be on the play. Justin looks like he's going to mulligan straight down to six. And Chris most likely keeping his seven. All right. So will Justin have a more fortunate game three with his mulligans? Because he did mulligan to five in game two. Does look like he is content with his six. So I'm gonna pitch one to the bottom and start the game. Chris will be going first. There's a Misty Rainforest past the turn to Justin. Justin gonna draw. Down comes a Tropical Island, pass back to Chris. Chris gonna take his turn. Down comes a Tropical Island, passing back to Justin. Riveting magic here. Riveting, riveting, riveting. There's an Underground Sea passing back. So no turn to up the Beanstalk. I think he's just. Kind of biding his time and making sure that he can deal with any doomsday shenanigans that Chris has. Chris thinking at the end of Justin's turn. Um, Justin is representing an orcish bowmaster. So Chris trying to most likely debate whether or not he wants to try and fire off a brainstorm. Looks like he is not going to go it, go through with it. And then he draws for his turn. Going to crack the Misty Rainforest. Big ups to Chris for keeping the life totals all updated and everything. So gets two mana. Hard casts Edge of Autumn. So I think he's going to search for a basic island. There it is. So tapping two mana at the end of Chris's turn. There's an Orcish Bowmaster. Interesting. I've never seen a Doomsday deck hard cast Edge of Autumn for ramp before. Very curious. So Justin is going to take his turn after everything is settled here. He does ping Chris down to 18. Justin going to draw for his turn. Looks like it was a polluted delta. There's a tundra coming in for two. And he's passing back to Chris. Chris will untap and draw for his turn. 
And Chris not doing anything, just passing the turn. Down comes Bayou. There's another Orcish Bowmaster. Okay, so it will... So we'll resolve and then the trigger on the stack. He is targeting Chris because nothing else to target. There's a Veil of Summer. So it looks like he's just trying to cycle here. Actually, if he if he sets up the Veil of Summer now, it'll fizzle the ping. It won't grow the Orc army. And Chris is safe to, to fire off any brainstorms that he needs to or that he wants to. So this baits out a fluster storm. Yeah, so storm is three, Orcish Bowmaster is one, Veil of Summer is two, and then he has to pay for the original fluster storm. So it doesn't have the extra mana unless he goes Dark Ritual, but I don't think this is what you really want to be fighting over with a Dark Ritual. Looks like it successfully counters the Veil of Summer. So Chris will get pinged and that Orc army will grow. Chris, sorry, Justin going to come in. And down comes an Orcish Bowmaster of his own. Pings the Orc army that's out of combat, or pings the Orcish Bowmaster outside of combat, and now Orc army is going to block the original Orcish Bowmasters. So that's two Orcish Bowmasters that Chris has dealt with pretty easily. He does take two from the, Orcish, uh, the Orc army, though. Uh, but having your own your own orc army against the uh, uh, beans is not a terrible position to be in. There's a carpet of flowers, so an immense amount of mana coming from Chris. Looks like he's coming in for one. Going to the second main phase, he's gonna have f three. Oh, there's only three islands because that's a bayou. So he gets three black. Down comes Shieldred. Woo. There's a ponder. Now he gets to gain some life. All right, so this is definitely a semblance of not Turbo Doomsday. He's definitely able to play the mid-range grind game here. Looking to resolve this ponder, he is okay with the three and gets to draw, and now he gets to gain two life. And I think this is going to be a pass to Justin. Justin going to draw. The advantage that Justin has here is that he has plenty of removal for the shieldred uh, but that's a miracle draw from the triumph of saint catherine okay so because triumph of saint catherine was the first draw of the turn shieldred does make justin lose two life there's a savannah so five different duels from justin's side of the board gonna pass back can't really fight through the shieldred at the moment chris gonna draw t for the turn and then gain two life from his own shieldred now it's making it an even 17 17 he is going to trigger the Carpet of Flowers, it looks like. So he will be getting three mana again. There's three black mana for a Doomsday. Justin does let it resolve. Justin looks like he has two cards in hand, neither of them counter spells. Otherwise, I'm sure he would have tried to fight over this Doomsday resolving. Or even the the shieldred. Apologies for the the cut there, but my dog started barking. Um, anyway, Chris has resolved a doomsday, and he has made his pile. Justin's just gonna quickly go through what is left over to try and get a semblance of what's left in Chris's deck. There are like pros and cons to Chris r resolving a doomsday here, like. Okay, so there's an Edge of Autumn cycle. Gonna gain two life from the Shieldred. But he could have just tried to... Like, if he wants to end the game pretty quickly, he's gonna do the Doomsday line. Um, he does have... He definitely he definitely does have enough mana to cast through this Thassa's Oracle, but because Justin only has the two cards in hand and he didn't respond to the Shieldred or the Doomsday, Chris is probably thinking that he can end the game now. Opposed to not casting the Doomsday and trying to win through all of Justin's removal. Okay, so Chris going to use the blue mana to consider. Going to use the Surveil to draw the card. 
gains two life, goes up to 12. So he didn't gain life off of the street race cycle, but he doesn't end the game. So just passes the turn back to Justin. This is a very curious line of play. Like, if you weren't going to end the game on that one turn, I'm wondering if it was even worth casting the Doomsday in the first place. I guess he does lose the, the race to a Triumph of St. Catherine. So, yeah, I guess resolving the Doomsday is a, is a, is a must and winning through the Doomsday. Okay, that makes sense. Chris going to draw the second last card in his library. Uh, generates mana from the Carpet of Flowers. Looks like he's going to get three blue. Going to use two. Cast a Thassa's Oracle. So this is game winning if Justin can't respond to the, the Thassa's Oracle. All right. So that is Chris taking the game over Justin in game three. So now Chris's record is one and one. I'll see you next time for round three.